Hello friends, this video on oscillations part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 20 before going ahead with part 21. Now we will talk about certain, sim certain systems which execute simple harmonic motion. We will talk about some two systems which are very common examples of simple harmonic motion. So the first one is the simple pendulum. Even though till now since we started this lesson I have always been taking the example of a simple pendulum to explain you the various concepts. So now let us see specifically the scenario for a simple pendulum. How do we find out the time period or is there a specific expression for time period of a simple pendulum? So first let us understand when is a system called a simple pendulum? Does a simple pendulum actually mean a pendulum or what is it like? A simple pendulum is a system which consists of a mass of particle, a particle of mass m which is called the bob of the pendulum. So you should have a mass of m which is known as the bob of the pendulum. There has to be an unstretchable massless string. There has to be a string which is massless and which is unstretchable. Pivot point. What is pivot point? The point from which the thread is hanging. This point from which the thread is hanging has to be fixed. So this point is called pivot point. And the equilibrium position. So the equilibrium position you all know now. Right now the system is in equilibrium position. Now when you take this mass M to one extreme end and leave it. Let us suppose if you take a very thin almost massless string and you attach a small ball at one end of it. You tie the other end of the string to some support. Right? And you leave it as it is. What will you see? The mass will be hanging vertically downwards and it will be at rest. Now let us suppose you hold the mass, take it to one extreme end and then leave it. So what will happen after that? The mass will start oscillating. It will start oscillating like this. So this position where the mass tends to come when it is left to its own is known as the equilibrium position. So what is a simple pendulum? A simple pendulum is a system where you have a mass M attached to a massless and unstretchable string from a pivot point. So any such system can be called as a simple pendulum. Now we will describe the motion of a simple pendulum. I mean how do we write the equation for a simple pendulum or how does this motion take place. Now when you observe this motion of the pendulum we will see what are the different forces that act on this bob. Right? Because there must be certain forces. As we already discussed before, there is something called restoring force. But is the restoring force the only force which is acting on this bob? No. Of course, the gravitational force cannot be neglected. Whenever any object is hanging this way, there has to be a gravitational force which is always trying to pull the object towards itself. Right? So there is a gravitational force that is Fg which is acting downwards. Now what is the gravitational force in this case? Gravitational force is nothing but the weight of the object which is Mg acting downwards. Right? Now what is the other force? The other force is the tension which is acting on the ball. Tension, what is tension? Tension is the force which acts due to the string and this tension always acts in the opposite direction of the gravitational force. So tension is due to the string and it acts upwards. Now let us suppose the object is at this position. So the force mg will act downwards. right? And the tension T will act along this direction. So the tension always acts towards the pivot point. It acts along the string towards the pivot point. 
So this is mg and this is t. Let us suppose this is the y axis. We are considering the moment when the body is making an angle theta with the vertical. So in this case, we can resolve this mg into two components, right? This mg can be resolved into two components. If this angle is theta, this angle will also be theta. So this will be, so what will be, the, what will be this component? This is mg, that is fg. Now if this angle is theta, what will be the component along this axis? This will be nothing but fg cos theta. And what will be this? This will be nothing but fg sin theta. I am just resolving into which two components. If this is f and this angle is theta, so this will become f cos theta and this will become f sin theta. Right? So we can say now at looking at this diagram, we can say that fg cos theta will be equal to t. Now what is fg? Gravitational forces mg. So mg cos theta is equal to t. Now what about mg sin theta? mg sin theta is the one which this these two there is no motion along the vertical direction, right? So the vertical forces that is tension and f cos theta, they will cancel out each other. They will both be equal and opposite, right? So the forces acting along the y direction that is tension and this they will both be equal and opposite. But what about this force that is mg sin theta or fg sin theta? This force is the one which produces the restoring torque about the pivot point. We spoke about restoring force, right? So this mg sin theta, so you have another force component which is left out that is mg, this fg sin theta is nothing but mg sin theta. So this component is the one which provides the restoring torque about the pivot point. So because of this component, the movement of this bob is like that, that it always tries to come back to its main position, right? So what is the, what is the direction of the restoring torque? Now let us calculate the restoring torque. Why is the term torque coming into place here? Because torque comes into play when we talk of a rotational motion. So in this case, a rotation is involved about an axis. This vertical axis is the axis and there is a rotation which is taking place. So the restoring torque tau will be equal to force that is the restoring force or the force mg sin theta into L that is the length of the arm. Let us suppose L is the length of the pendulum. So this becomes mg sin theta into L. And the direction is negative, so it is minus because it acts in the opposite direction to displacement. Direction is opposite to displacement. So this is the restoring torque. Now in rotational motion, we studied that torque is equal to I into alpha. What is I? I is moment of inertia and alpha is angular acceleration, right? So we can equate the previous equation with this, that is we can say I alpha is equal to minus L mg sin theta. So from this we can say alpha is equal to minus mg L sin theta divided by I. Now, if, if theta is very, very small, if theta is very small, we can approximate sine theta with theta, right? Because what is the, sine theta? The expansion of sine theta is something like theta plus theta cubed by factorial 3 and so on. So, when your theta is very small, you can neglect the higher powers. So you are only left with theta. So we say for when theta is equal to small, sine theta can be written as theta. Therefore, alpha becomes minus mgl theta divided by i. So this shows that angular acceleration is proportional to the angular displacement.
This theta represents the angular position or the angular displacement. So from here we conclude that angular acceleration is proportional. This is angular acceleration is proportional to the angular displacement. Now using this we can say whenever any quantity is proportional to another quantity, we can convert the proportionality symbol into an equal symbol by inserting a constant. So we can say that alpha is equal to omega square theta. What is omega square? Omega square is nothing but this left out quantity that is minus mgl by i. So we can say this implies omega square is equal to mgl by i. Now with this we can say that omega is equal to root over mgl by i. Now what is omega? By definition we know that angular frequency is 2 pi by t. This is equal to root over mgl divided by i. Or we can say that time period t is equal to 2 pi root over i divided by mgl. Now what is i? i is moment of inertia. Now from our rotational motion chapters, we know that moment of inertia about an axis is equal to mr square that is mass into radius square. What is mass here? Mass is the mass of the bob and what is the radius? Radius is nothing but the length of the pendulum so that is ml square. Now we put this value of i, we get time period is equal to 2 pi root over ml square divided by mgl. So mm will get cancelled, l will get cancelled. So this comes out to be 2 pi root over l by g. Therefore time period is equal to 2 pi root over l by g. This is an expression of time period for a simple pendulum. So in case of any simple pendulum, you can directly apply this expression. So time period of a simple pendulum depends on the length of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity. So here we derived the expression for time period of simple pendulum and while doing so we also observe what are the various forces responsible for this kind of motion of the pendulum. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.